Ben Shapiro, editor in chief of the DailyWire.com. Ben, two hours she was perched on that statue. What did you think of this stunt? I mean, it's idiotic. They, they then had to evacuate the entire island because they decided to do the stunt. The, the real issue with the stunt is not that someone is pulling a public relations ploy in order to get media attention. People do this sort of thing all the time. The point is, is this actually productive for her cause? Like, let's say that you were her, you were she, and you, you, you thought that you were going to bring attention to this particular cause. Is the best way to do that to climb up on the Statue of Liberty and annoy everyone in the country on the 4th of July? What's the is answer that, to that is, question? Is your, Did she win over any supporters with this? No, I mean, the, the only people who are into this are the people who already support her. But, but I guess that's where we are in the country at this point, is that everybody's attempting to rev up the base more than they are attempting to win over people in the middle. And that's particularly true for folks on the left who think the louder they scream, the more people they're going to win over. It seems like precisely the opposite is true. It seems the louder they scream, the more people are looking at, at the Trump administration and saying, well, at least they're not shutting down the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July. Hmm. She was taking advice from Michael Moore, as you just heard him earlier. We, we have to, in his words, put our bodies on the line to stop Trump. Is, is this what the far left movement, movement is pushing for at this point? Well, I mean, there, there's no question that I think that the, the heart of the far left uh, is, is with this particular part of the movement. The, the Maxine Waters shout people down in gas stations, the let's go to a restaurant and shout Christian Nielsen out of a restaurant, the let's, let's badger Elaine Chow as she comes out of, a, as, as she comes out of dinner. This, this is where the left's heart is, and this is the real problem for the Democratic Party, because Schumer and Pelosi are sitting there saying, guys, we're alienating a huge swath of the country, and the hard left is saying, well, you have no heart, you don't have the passion. Well, when the passion is not united with the, with the leadership of the Democratic Party, it's pretty clear who's going to lose, and it's not going to be the passion. The passion is going to win. There's a wild, a wild shift to the left that's happening thanks to the, this, this far left part of the Democratic Party. It doesn't bode well for them in, in future election cycles if they continue it, which I suppose is fine with me. Well, obviously, the 28-year-old Democrat socialist brought a lot of attention to this. The Hill, uh, a piece in The Hill this morning, progressives poised to shape agenda if Dems take back House. Is that the case? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no question that they they believe that the, all of the spirit is with the Bernie Sanders left of the movement. Now, what's really fascinating is that there was sort of a gap between the intersectional left and the Bernie Sanders left. A lot of the people on the intersectional left, people who thought about identity, politics, and race, they said that Bernie Sanders wasn't paying enough attention to issues of race and sexual orientation and sex, that he was almost too focused on socialism. Uh, Ocasio-Cortez Ocasio is, is doing a good job of bridging that gap because she is an intersectional candidate. Obviously, she's she's a minority ethnicity and she's a woman, uh, and she's also preaching Bernie Sanders socialism, and that's why the party is seeing her as this sort of great uniting figure, even though she is as radical as radical can be. You know, you wonder if they risk turning off some of their own voters uh, going this far to the left, uh, but it is something that we're watching, and clearly um, the world was watching as, as that woman scaled the Statue of Liberty on Independence Day yesterday. Ben Shapiro, thank you.